Hey everyone, it's Game Fruit Pulp, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Building Toronto. On today's episode, I'm really excited to go uh, over our newest completed build on the project, completed by uh, United Valeria, one of our uh, one of our longer time builders. Now, I guess all of our builders really have been on for quite a while now. The ones that we still have that are active, but uh, this is a milestone on the map because it's our first church, and uh, he did an incredible job capturing it. So today, I'm excited to be going over his great work with you. Uh, before jumping into the video. Uh, we have a sponsor. Today's sponsor is my Teespring merch page. Um, Christmas is coming up, and you got a few days left if you want to order a good Christmas, cool Christmas present for your friends, or for maybe one of your friend, uh, viewers of the channel that you know of in your family, or something like that. Um, we have some Christmas themed Cappy merch and Game Fruit Pulp merch. For those of you who don't know, Cappy is the mascot of our channel, and uh, if you want to buy some regular merch as well, obviously that's always there for sale as well. And um, if you want to check any of that out, be sure to check the link in the description. And if I'm smart enough and remember, I'll also have the link up in the top right corner of the video. So without further ado, let's get into learning a little bit about the St. Andrew's Church. So St. Andrew's is located at the uh, the intersection, the southeast corner of King and Simcoe. Uh, and it was built, <clears throat> the groundbreaking for it began in 1874 and it was completed on February 13th, 1876, which makes it, I believe, the oldest building that we have right now on the project. So another unique thing about it, uh, obviously a building that old, it's been designated as a heritage designation by both the city of Toronto and the, prov uh, the provincial body for designating heritage buildings. I don't know what that is called, but uh, it was its architect was W.G. Storm and it was its style is Romanesque revival. <clears throat> so the church itself was founded in 1830 and it uh, actually ended up making a move. And so what we're going to do today is talk about the history of the church. And um, basically, because there isn't too much detail on the actual architecture itself, I guess probably because it's so old, um, we're going to talk more about the story behind the church and, and its journey through time as it arrives to where it is today, uh, almost over 150 years later. So uh, obviously all this information, as usual, comes from Wikipedia. So, the congregation was founded in 1830 as the first Church of Scotland congregation in the town of York. For those of you who don't know, I've mentioned this quite a few times, but the town of the city of Toronto was initially founded as the town of York before changing its name uh, later, which actually you know, it might be a good uh, video to talk about a little bit in the future, so maybe we'll return to that topic in a few weeks. Uh, the original church was located at the southwest corner of Church in Adelaide and was built by John Ewart. After the 1843 split of the Presbyterian Church in Scotland, a portion of the congregation supportive of the Free Church Movement left St. Andrews the following summer and founded Knox Presbyterian along with another group led by Reverend James Harris that had been separate since 1834. The original St. Andrews built building eventually proved too small and the church moved to its new location on the southeast corner of King and Simcoe Street, one block west of University Avenue and the St. Andrews subway station, which got its name from the church on February 13, 1876. This westward move caused some controversy, and the church split over the issue. One group, 62 of its 403 members, continued in the old church, which became known as Old St. Andrews. The group moved in, in uh, this group moved in 1878 to a new building located on nearby Jarvis Street. It continued until 1951 when Old St. Andrews United Church joined with Westminster, formerly Yorkville Presbyterian Central, formerly Methodist, to become St. Andrews United at 117 Bloor Street East. The old St. Andrews building was sold to another denomination and became St. Andrews Evang Evangelic uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Evangelical Lutheran Church. Um, so all these churches, kind of interestingly, are, are still around today, I believe. Um, St. Andrews United is a pretty interesting looking church. It has more of a modern design uh, on uh, on Bloor Street. So it'll be quite a while till we get there, obviously, up all the way up Bloor. And um, the St. Andrews Evangelical Lutheran Church. I, I'm butchering that word. I'm sure, and I, po I apologize. But um, that church is is still around as well, and and that has obviously more of an older style because it's so. Uh, I believe that was the one that was built first in um, in the 1800s. I believe. Uh, not 100% sure on that though. So moving into the 20th century for this build, the main congregation moved to the new Romanesque Revival Architecture Church that became known as the New St. Andrews. This building was designed by noted Toronto architect W.G. Storm, and the, storm, and the church was the Central Presbyterian Church in Toronto, with an addition and renovation in 1906. 
It became well known under the ministry of renowned orator Reverend D.J. McDonnell, who pushed the church towards an active social role and was the center of a hearsay trial in 1876. As such, the intersection of King and Simcoe was popular, uh, popularly said to represent one of the four parts of Toronto society, named Salvation. The others were legislation, the lieutenant governor's residence, education, and the home, the original home of Upper Canada College, and damnation, a tavern. The congregation was one of the most active in opposition to the union that saw uh, the majority of Canadian Presbyterian churches join the United Church of Canada in 1925. The U St. Andrew's congregation, under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Stuart C. Parker, voted 94%, uh, or sorry, 19 to 733, against joining the new church. It was at St. Andrew's that representatives of the remaining Presbyterian churches from across Canada met for a Congress, as well as the General Assembly of the Continuing Presbyterian Church in June of 1925. At this time, 73 Simcoe Street became used, uh, became used the postal address for the anti-church union group, the Presbyterian Church Association. Later in the 20th century, the church's downtown location presented a challenge for St. Andrews, since the area had become largely industrial and later one of the poorest in the city. Increasingly, the church patrons were living further north. There were thus discussions of moving the church again, but each time the con uh, congregation voted to remain put. Eventually, the revival of the downtown core in the 1970s and 1980s began with the opening of the St. Andrews subway station at uh, nearby University Avenue in 1963, and further redevelopment of the area, including the addition of Roy Thompson Hall on the southwest corner of Simcoe and King Streets. Uh, those of you who are attentive viewers will notice that Roy Thompson Hall is actually, uh, the, ex the external shell is actually built, and you can see that as we uh, as we fly around. Obviously, right now we're looking at the interior, but if you noticed earlier, you could see uh, Roy Thompson Hall on our map already. After acquiring air rights for new buildings in the area, there was an extensive rebuilding of this at the south end, including the construction of a new condominium tower in which the congregation retained the first three floors. Again, we have that as well, but uh, I didn't choose to showcase the condominium part today. Uh, I chose to showcase just the church, um, but that obviously is on the map as well. So if you want to come hop on the map and look for it yourself, you definitely can. Uh, and the, the property is designated under part four of the Ontario Heritage Act since uh, August 10th, 1981. And there is also a heritage easement on the property since July in 1981 as well. The designation note that it was designed uh, by William Storm in 1875 with an alteration in 1907 by Curry, Sprout, and Rolf. And the last thing is obviously the 21st century. So the congregation maintains ties with its Scottish roots. Uh, in March 2005, it celebrated the 175th anniversary as a congregation. The moderator of the Church of Scotland, Dr. Alison Elliott, was involved in their anniversary as their anniversary speaker. The 48th Highlanders Regiment has strong links to the congregation, and the regiment's museum is located in the basement of the church. The museum includes regimental uniforms, medals, photographs, weapons, and other artifacts. Founded in 1959, the museum opened its current location in 1997. So that's something interesting that we don't have, that we could look towards possibly building in the future. But uh, regardless, that is really all we have about the St. Andrew's Church. Uh, thanks to Wikipedia for existing to allow me to have something to talk about when I do these videos. Um, United Valeri did an excellent job capturing this build. Really, really awesome job. He took uh, he took his time with it and made sure he got all the details right. And it looks really, really great. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I hope you guys are too. Um, so that is really everything. If you enjoyed the video and you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're a returning viewer and you enjoyed, be sure to hit the bell if you haven't already and share the channel with your friends. We can keep growing this community. Uh, we have another awesome planet, or not planet Minecraft. We have another awesome building Toronto video coming out soon. So watch out for that. Aside from that, my name is Game Free Pulp, and I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one.